In this video, I'll be taking on the role of the industrial designer. I'll be stepping away from the typical surface modeling techniques and I'll be trying out the form tool and you can see the results here. Now, this is a very powerful tool, but in order to really use it, I think you need to have a very strong image of what you want to design. So if you don't already know it, uh, this is a tool called Sketchbook. Now you can download this on your tablet or your PC and I'd say it's fairly easy to pick up. So how have I used it? I've exported a still of my 3D model with the canvas shown. And I'm using the canvas as reference only for scale and positioning. So just roughing up a concept of how the bodywork is going to be. I have the tail piece. I have a couple of infill pieces. Uh, perhaps this may be one piece. And then I'll have a side panel on the tank, which will then go into the frame. Looking at the bike from the rear, I'll have the main tail piece with the headlight and then the mudguard infill. So you can see that I'm just trying to sketch in some details to try and build an image of the shape that I actually want to make. So the current concept is that we'll have a single tail piece, a mudguard infill, and then the tail light. Now before moving on to the modeling, it's probably a good thing to do some reverse engineering of some reference models, some reference bikes, to get an idea of how we're really going to attach these parts to the bike. So this is the Triumph Trident 660. And we can see here how the bodywork just comes up to the top of the frame and we actually have the seat that's going to come down and kind of close up that gap. Now since this is quite a low profile, it means that our fixings end up being quite low, just these small tabs on the side of the frame. Now here's an example of the Triumph Daytona 660. Now this bike uses a modified, revised version of the Trident 660 frame. So usually changes means improvements. So we can see that the bodywork is actually mounted to the top of the tubes and then on the pressing at the back here. Now I'd originally designed this rear pressing with the form on the back to give clearance for the tail light, follow the profile of the back of the bike whilst providing stiffness to the pressing. It was also designed this way to try and prevent theft since it would be more difficult for thieves to reach in and hook the cable of the seat latch. Here we can see again where the fixings are located on the frame. And I think I'm going to follow this concept for the time being, but as the project develops and uh, maybe it changes to multiple pieces, I will revise this concept. Now there may be different terms, but in my experience, a surface is a term used to refer to the external, most aesthetic surfaces. So we start informing by creating a simple surface and I'm just using a simple straight line and I'm going to extrude that out from the center plane. On the right, we can modify the number of segments, uh, both across and along the length of the surface. We can also change how they're spaced out, whether it's uniform or curvature. In this case, I'm just going to keep it simple with a number of faces, and I'll keep the front faces as one. So now we have this simple surface. I can actually add a curve to this surface to create uh, additional segments. And we do this by using the insert point tool, which actually inserts uh, a curve through the points that you create. Okay, to show simply how this works, uh, we can select edges or points and then we can right click to go to edit form and we can get this handle and we can start moving these points around. We can also select uh, groups, multiple points or curves, and we can drag them all together. I think it's important to get used to the freedom that we have in freeforming, as well as getting used to how to move the points and edges in the way that we want to, to generate our geometry. So if you come from a background in parametric modeling, it might feel a bit strange coming into a freeforming tool like this. It feels like it's so easy to make mistakes, but what we should remember is that whilst it's easier to make mistakes or ruin a model, it's also very easy to fix a model. So here we can see that uh, if we don't need these segments, we can select these faces and then we can just uh, right click and use the delete and we can easily undo that. We can also delete these surfaces by deleting the enclosing edge. 
and we can quickly highlight that whole edge by double clicking. So you can see here that this edge is actually not the smoothest of lines. So if you come into modify, you can use the smooth feature, but this works on the surface. So we need to highlight all the surfaces and we can select them all quickly by selecting from the start point to the end with a double click. We then increase the smoothness here and click OK and we'll see how the edge uh, smoothed out. So this is where the forming really starts to begin. Now a common technique is to uh, select a whole edge, edit form and then hold alt as you drag one of the handles. Uh, each handle will generate the surface in a different way. You'll also notice here that uh, it's a rounded surface and now you can see a kind of mesh-like profile overlaid. So you can actually change the view mode. Uh, a quick way of doing that is using Alt-1, Alt-2 or Alt-3. The recommended view for when you're moving your points is probably going to be the box mode. It doesn't look as beautiful, but you can see the true position of the uh, lines, edges and points. So we can also use the insert edge feature. Uh, this kind of creates an offset that mimics the same profile of the edge that you've selected. I don't really want that, so I'm just going to select the whole row of surfaces and I'm going to use the subdivide feature and then select how many segments I want to make. Now it's not always the best thing to have too many points. You'll actually get a better surface using less points. So we only really want to use as many points as we need. So now it's going to be a case of uh, selecting and dragging all of these points and edges to positions that give us the form that we're looking for. Making sure that we have no interference with their existing models. And just tidying up the points that seem to just be a little bit lost. Now I want to start working on the top profile here. So actually if we select this and use edit form, the top handle will actually control how horizontal or parallel the line is to ground. So we can say that the handle on the left will also control how vertical the line can be. And this is all relative to where this pivot is located. And here we're just pulling the surface further away from the frame. Now you could drag a select number of these points down all in one, but you could also draw a line between uh, this point and this edge and then trim away those top segments. And in order to select just the ones that you want, we could select the start and the end one with a double click. So now I want to start working on the top profile here to bring it more in line with the top of the frame tubes. And in some cases it's probably easier to do so when you look at it from the other side. So the next feature that we're going to use is the symmetry mirror duplicate. So whilst this mirrors our T-spine or body across the plane, this is kind of like a live mirror. It's always updating as we make changes to the other side. So you can see I have a larger gap here and we can just modify the uh, weld tolerance uh, to fill this gap. And then we have our complete uh, rear tail piece. So this is what it looks like now in box view mode. But if we change this to the smooth setting, it looks a bit better. But we do have this strange double line here, which is not going to be ideal. And we can fix this by using the utility to make it uniform. So whilst it doesn't look like much has happened in box mode, when you change the surface mode, we'll see that, that line is gone. So to tidy up this edge, I use the straighten feature. 
and then from there it's going to be a case of just tweaking all of these points until I get the shape that I'm looking for. If you want to have a more defined edge, you can use the crease feature and we'll see more of that in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to use all the techniques that have showed up until this point to uh, tidy up this model and get the image that I'm looking for. I'm going to speed up this part, but I will pause uh, and slow down when I get to another feature that may be useful. Okay, so on the underside, if I select a series of edges and create this shape here, I can then add the crease feature to uh, kind of define this edge. And this allows you to create more emphasized geometry because you have those more defined edges. So the crease is going to be useful for me here because I'm going to create a flat section of geometry in this bodywork and I can modify the bodywork around it without affecting the internal surfaces. And in order to do that, I'll need to add an additional crease. Here I'm just correcting the placement of the crease as the bracket actually extends further up the frame. But this allows me to show how when we create this crease, uh, we still have the previous creases, including this one across the middle. And we can get rid of that by selecting those edges, modifying and using the uncrease feature. Now when you use the edit form control, there are actually some rotation handles as well. So if you use that on edges like this, we can actually create something a bit more interesting. And then we can use the box to move everything a bit more freely. Now remember I said that this is going to be a mounting point to the bracket on the frame, so I want this to be flat. So if I highlight all these surfaces, I can then go modify and then flatten. And I just come in here and I delete a couple of segments which I don't think I'll be needing. So just come back to this very useful feature. By holding Alt and dragging by this arrow, I can pull the fairing over the frame tubes. You can also add a crease in here which looks a bit too sharp, but then when we change to the surface mode, it doesn't look so bad, but I'd like to soften it a little bit, so I'll drag that surface up. Just around there. Now another feature that we could use here is the bridge feature. So by selecting a couple of edges either side, we select the side one and side two edges and then make sure the arrow is not going to twist our surface. And these arrows are okay. Now we can view a preview of how the surface mesh is going to form. And then we can click OK to see the result. In this case, however, I don't plan to have the surface covering the top here, so I'll delete that. So in the end, I did have another subdivision on this top surface, so I just add a new crease in here. So I'm nearly finished this initial concept. Uh, so for now, it's just really going to be uh, tweaking these points just to get uh, a nice smoother surface. Uh, whilst in surface mode it may look smooth, but it's not actually as smooth as it could be. So coming back to the underside of the tailpiece, I want to take all these surfaces and I want to create some more interesting geometry. So I'm going to create a new crease around them. Now I want to start dragging and pulling these surfaces around to create some more interesting uh, curvature here. But since it's directly connected to the flattened surface, I need to create some separation, so I do that by using the subdivide feature. Now we have a layer of surfaces between 
uh, the surface that I want to pull that I've just highlighted here and the flattened surface. We we'll just uh, add another crease in the middle here just to separate them. Then we're free to drag these surfaces around to see what kind of interesting geometry we can make. So we're almost at the finished result of this uh, initial concept. So now it's just going to be a case of tweaking any outstanding points just to try and tidy it up that little extra more. So we can then go into visual style and select shaded to see how it looks. And we can even go into render mode and apply some appearances. I also mocked up a seat and I really think it helps to bring it all together. So this has actually been a very fun learning experience because I've not used freeforming before and modeled fairings like this. So these have been very simple but I can make something more complicated going forward and I'll probably also work on the front fairings as well. I'd just like to say thank you very much to everyone that's watching, subscribing and commenting. I really appreciate it.